And we are live here on a painting live Friday on the Frugal Crafters channel. I'm here with Sarah. Hello. And we're going to do some pastel painting today. And most importantly, I'm going to show you how to kind of reuse old paintings or backgrounds and kind of give them new life so that you don't have to throw them out. You can actually use them. Uh, we're going to use a variety of pastels. We're also going to use some black and white watercolor. You can also use acrylics if it's not glossy. Um, I typically don't paint with black and white, so I always have these tubes kicking around from different sets and I'm going to put them to some use today. This video, um, this live stream is sponsored by jerrysartorama.com. You can find all the supplies we're using today there and I appreciate their support. So the first thing we're going to do is um, I'm just going to look at these. I have a just a stack of backgrounds and things like that um, in my studio and I try to find different ways to use them and these are actually all step outs from the craftsy class that I did in Denver and I had a whole bag of these different backgrounds so I thought well I'm not going to repaint all those paintings because when you do a when you do a class or you do a segment for TV you need to have stages of all your paintings done and then when you're done you just have all these half finished paintings so I thought I would take one of these backgrounds it's pretty much what I used there and I would give it some new life and if you don't have um, a background if you have any like old crappy paper you don't like very well that didn't work good for watercolor it'll work fine for this I mean you could even paint on a cardboard box if that's what you have. I'm just gonna wet my area here just to kind of break up some of the stenciling that I had done on that background to kind of unify it. And I've got my uh, craft mat on my table so I can actually squeeze my paint right out onto this and I'm just using black and white. This is the Turner watercolor from the 18 set kit that I just don't put these colors in my palette because I don't use them very much. And we are gonna go from there. So this is a great way to use up that black and white watercolor that comes in anytime you buy a set. I don't know why manufacturers do that. Why do they always put a black and white in? Do you know? I don't. I think it's crazy. Um, and then I'm gonna use like a, just, a, <coughs> just a one inch wash here and I am going to just pick up some of this color and just slap it in. Seriously, you want a painterly look, nothing fancy. I just wanna kinda of tone down that green and brown. Uh, Biscuit 115, what kind of watercolors do you suggest I use? You can use whatever you like. Um, these are the Turners, which are a great value for an artist grade watercolor. I'm going to throw some of this in here. Um, I'd say whatever you're comfortable with. Um, with using, if it's if your paint is so expensive that you feel like you're going to waste it, then that's the paint's too expensive for you. You want to use something that you're going to feel free about creating with. And I know there's a little bit of a difference of opinion between artists and the quality of paint. A lot of artists say use the best quality, only artist quality. But if you're going to be too nervous to use it because it's so expensive, then that's not the best choice for you. So, and by the time you've used through a set of student paints, you'll be ready and be comfortable enough to work with the professional paints. So that's what I recommend. So now we've got a really cool texture here and if you look at the reference photo which I linked in the video description you can see how it has a really cool texture in the background um, and that's kind of what I wanted to emulate because that the ref reference photo was so pretty. Now if you want more texture you can go in with your brush and um, either white or black whichever you think your painting needs and there's a lot of color in here because the um, the background had color so I try to pick a background or an old painting that has some of the colors I want in it anyway and then you could just kind of tap in some texture. The nice thing about using a gouache or an acrylic gouache is that or a watercolor is that it's got a tooth to it it's not going to be glossy and shiny and, and pastel is going to stick really well to it. And then this is like a little tablescape so you would have um, you would want your table area a little bit lighter and you can actually even just squirt it right onto your paper. So this is basically how we're doing a background. Now of course you can uh, do this later, paint along with me after the live stream if you're trying to, it's hard to chat and paint at the same time. And then you're just going to want to let that dry or speed it up with a heat tool. So that's how we did our background. So what I'm going to do is grab the one that's already dry and wipe up my mess because I'm going to need that space there. And oh, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in all caps in the chat and Sarah will uh, be monitoring that so she can ask me any questions that come through. Uh, Amy Spiteri, what do you like most in art? Um, I like I like just uh, being in that, that stage where you're just feeling like very creative and exploring and... Uh, and that's my that's my favorite thing is just to just have fun and explore. 
I'm just going to put my brayer out of the way. All right, so um, if you found the reference photo that I linked up, you'll see that there is a still life with a couple of bottles, some flowers, and some fruit. And um, we're going to sketch that on. I'm going to sketch it in with a white pastel pencil, um, but you might actually want to do this with a less bold color. Um, I just want to make sure you guys can see it, so I'm going to do white, and I'm going to start with a... Um, a bottle over here so I'm going to start with a rectangle with a rounded bottom a little bit simply Tina would you consider doing a video about a beginner's art kit on a budget um yeah what kind of uh, what kind of art she doesn't say because I do have like travel like videos on like travel art kits and you know just kind of what I use uh, Michael Deardor, Lindsay, what inspires you the most to paint? Um, I really like um, flowers, kind of nature subjects like that. I'm going to put another bottle down here. So it's closer to us, so it's starting lower in the, um, in the scene here. Hopefully that's dark enough that you can see it. And this one's a squared off bottle. So I've got kind of a cube here. And this will get bolder as we go in and painting it. I just want to get the basic sketch in here. And you could always um, sketch it on scrap paper and transfer it with transfer paper like we've done before. But pastels are pretty forgiving. We can smudge them out and start again if we need to in a lot of cases. And then um, we've got a couple oranges we're going to put in here. And there's really not much I want to change about this composition. It's so, it's so pretty as it is. I think I'm going to move this one up a little bit higher though. And we've got another one right over here. And I don't think I'll put in the leaves yet. I'll just wait. A little cork in there. And then the flowers I'll sketch in when I'm ready to sketch those in. So we're going to start off with our vase here. And um, I've got all my pastels kind of in drawers over here. And I'm going to kind of go over the different types of pastels. So when you start off, you want to start off your sketch with a hard pastel. Pastel pencils are really hard, meaning they're not going to be as smudgeable and as soft as like a artist soft pastel, which is very, very soft. I just picking it up, I got some on my finger. That's how soft it is. So starting with a hard type in there and say we just had a blip, we're back. Yep. Okay, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> the uh, the internet kicked off for a minute, but we are back. And what I'm doing is using a new pastel and adding some... Um, some shading to this bottle here. It's a clear bottle, so we're just kind of picking up some background colors, and I used a background that had a lot of brown in it, and that's what I'm picking up here. Chewy, do not step on. Oh, Chewy's got about to step in my wet Chewy, background. <laughs> Chewy has a thing about wet paint on a wall, on the floor, any sort of paint, she somehow finds her way into the paint. <laughs> And since this bottle in front is clearish, kind of clear too, we're gonna bring that color right in through there. And when you're doing glass, it tends to reflect and refract everything around it. So, um, so we want any colors to be into that glass. We, it's it's fair game for any colors to be showing in there that we're gonna be using in our painting. And it doesn't matter what brand of pastels you are using, they're all pretty much the same, just with different various of hardnesses. And you wanna start off with your hardest pastels, like your pastel pencils, or your, um, or your like new pastels. And I'm just gonna keep any pastel stick I've used out, just so I know to go back to that if I need it. Um, and I keep mine in these little trays by color. I'm gonna go in with this kind of navy blue um, new pastel, because again, it's a, it's a harder color. And I'm going to go right over that brown so I kind of mix my own dark. Adding some shadows. I like pastel because it's kind of like a cross between drawing and painting. You get the satisfaction and immediacy of drawing, but then you have the look of a painting when you're done. And I think working on a toned paper like a background like we just did fill, really takes a lot of the work away so you're not trying to fill that paper with pastel. It makes it a lot easier. And then I don't have to worry about smudging the background because the background's dry paint. And it would be a fun way to get some creativity out when you don't necessarily feel like drawing or painting. You can just make some fun backgrounds for later. Exactly. Totally. 
Oh, and if you're interested in any of the uh, backgrounds that I was doing or, you know, what those were all from, there's a link in the video description to my Craftsy class, and it's a 50% off link. So my, my uh, YouTube viewers and blog readers get 50% off my class. So if you just go to Craftsy.com and you sign up, you're going to pay 30 bucks, but if you go from my link, you'll pay uh, 15 Uh, Sabrina Wilson, could could you possibly do some paintings in gouache? I'm very interested in the medium, but there aren't many videos to get started. Um, I would definitely consider that. My gouache isn't the highest quality. I have kind of some um, some cheaper gouache, but I could try it. Yeah. Video keeps pausing and buffering. Oh shoot! Let me just click over to my other screen and see what's going on in the live control room here. Um, oh, bad stream, it says. Uh-oh. Oh. Right. Um, would you mind running over and making sure the kids aren't on any sort of device? Yep, on my phone. I made sure I turned my phone on airplane mode, so. Okay, I'm going to keep on with the tutorial. We're going to make sure that no children are using up the internet. And uh, we're going to hope for the best here, guys. So I'm just outlining this with kind of a creamy yellow ochre color, pastel. And I want to get, kind of get the shape refined in there. I kind of like to blend it as I go a little bit just so that I can kind of see where I'm at. Okay, nobody's on their devices. They're getting ready to go outside, so. Okay, how's it look on the preview, on your preview now? All right, I have refreshed the encoder. Hopefully that does something. It might be the router. Oh, let's see. What? Can I see what it looks like on there? Oh, it's still buffering. Oh, it, it's doing it. We're going? We're going right oh, now. Oh, right, awesome, okay. Sorry about that, guys. Boy, I'm gonna have to go in there and edit some stuff when we're done. <laughs> uh, so I'm just, I'm just uh, kind of putting a shadow down the left side of the cork there with the brown, and I'm adding some yellow ochre to it, and I'm just gonna blend it. We're on the underpainting stage, so I like to do more blending in the underpainting than I do in the, in the final portions of the painting. I'm just putting in some shadow here and just making sure I have a good um, a good drawing pretty much. Uh, Missy Kern, how do you find your style? I think you just gotta paint and, and the more you paint the more you'll um, you'll start to develop that. There's no I don't know if anybody purposely goes out to paint in a certain style or not. I mean, maybe, but I think it's just something that happens with the more, you know, the more experience you get, the more you'll, you'll develop that and you'll come up with something that's unique. I'm going to go and do these oranges with kind of a, a light yellowy orange. And I can actually put some of that yellow ochre in there too, just to kind of cross pollinate a little bit. Not a ton, just enough to you know, kind of keep everything with the same local color. Oh, hopefully our technical, I don't want to jinx anything. I'm just going to say hopefully our technical difficulties it, it are done. It keeps pausing and buffering. Oh, no. Every, I'm going to say every 10 to 20 seconds, roughly. Oh, shoot. Maybe if you paused yours because you're sucking up some bandwidth too by monitoring. And then if you guys in the comments are having a really bad time of it, just let us know. Oh, um, well, it's going to be a man way behind in the chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I paused my side. Um, Carrie Hair. Hi, Pink Carrie. and gold. Okay to use plain water to refresh it a bit. Um, I would put a little alcohol in that water because I've heard the Inca Gold um, will mold quite a bit. So if, you know, you don't want to introduce any bacteria into that. I'm just highlighting. Now I'm going with a softer pastel. These pastels aren't very expensive. These ones are Sargent brand, I believe, or SMI. And, um, but they're, the colors are really vivid. I haven't had a problem with anything fading that I've done with them. So I just wanted to let you know that in case you were trying to, uh, to find an affordable pastel. 
that would um, that would suit your purposes. The Charvins there at Jerry's are a hard pastel. They're going to be more like a new pastel. Um, the SMI, uh, Faber-Castell, those are all um, a little bit softer. Uh, Aaron Clems, how would you suggest painting very wispy, thin, not fluffy clouds in watercolor? Paper towels don't seem to work for me on those kind. Hmm, wispy, thin clouds in watercolor. I think I would probably... Um, try to paint around the clouds and leave the white and then just use like a rake brush and just kind of drag some of your sky color into the clouds. So you're basically painting what's not the cloud and you're leaving the cloud alone, but that will help you get a little bit more of a wisp if you don't want to use like a white gouache or anything. Uh, Nizreen Diaz, what difference does the quality of your brushes make in a painting? Um, it, well, uh, the big, probably the biggest difference is how you, much you enjoy it while you're painting it. Um, because the brushes are not, you know, in your painting when you're done. It's there. It's more for your enjoyment. Um, but a really poor quality brush could leave hairs on your painting. Um, and could actually, like, if the brush is too stiff, could scrape up your paper and, you know, make it pill and damage your painting that way. So... I would say it's it's more like the enjoyment because the actual you know brush has no bearing on what your final painting is you know it's not like paint or paper which is actually there that's part of your painting um but your enjoyment and good quality brushes don't have to cost you a ton of money anymore they're they're much more much more affordable these days uh pipe dream do you have any advice for an elder person beginning in art is it too late to learn absolutely not no i used to teach i was the art director at a senior center and um, a lot of people had never picked up a brush before because you know they didn't have time raising their families and during you know working and uh, i found many had hidden talents they never knew that they had so if you have the interest by all means go for it and it's good for your brain to learn new stuff absolutely so always good absolutely Maxine Perry, pastels seem messy and wipe off on fingers, paper, etc. Do you have to fix it after painting? Um, it really depends. If you're going to frame it right away, no, you don't need to. I don't like to fix my paintings at all, any medium. So what I tend to do, and oh, and when you're done, don't blow the dust. You know, if you get a lot of dust, just kind of tap it off onto a napkin on the side of your table or over the trash can. That way you don't kick it up into the air and you don't breathe it in because some pastels are toxic and you don't want to breathe in the dust. Um, I don't like to fix things because it changes the color, but um, if you do, you can use a very cheap hairspray, something without a lot of silicones, or you could use, um, a, you can buy fixative. Personally, I would rather just tape a piece of like glassine or deli paper to it and put it in a portfolio until I'm ready to frame it. Because I don't, I don't like w the way fixative changes the colors. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh, Clarissa Fay, how many times each week do you watercolor? Um, it really depends. I would, um, sometimes I watercolor something every day and other times it's, you know, just like twice a week. It depends on what my work schedule is really, how much, how many other things I have to work on and. Life. Yeah, life. <laughs> watercolor is pretty quick, so you can get a little watercolor practice in every day if you want to, usually. Uh, Cassell's English class. First time seeing a class live. Oh, well, welcome. So, I'm sorry you had to uh, pop in during the, the questionable difficulties. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, are oil and chalk pastels equally hard or soft? What is the basic difference? Thank you. It's the binder. Oil pastels have an oil binder. Um, chalk pastels have a clay or chalk binder. Usually your artist pastels are a clay binder, but they feel chalky. They're soft pastels, they're a, they're a clay. Uh, E4 Eclectic, hi ladies, good afternoon. I finally get to watch live, love this show. Oh yay, thank you so much. Thank you for bearing with us during yes. the technical well, problems. If you can't stick with us during some technical issues, come on now, <laughs> everyone has technical issues. Fair, live, fair we, weather viewers. <laughs> we, we live in Maine, so you know, we don't have the, uh, the G4, not G4, four, eight, four, whatever. We have soup cans year. with a piece of string. Let's be, let's be <laughs> honest. <laughs> 4G network and all that. It's, we just got it. We don't have anything better. And whew, anyway, uh, Lillian Legette, 
For beginners, do you recommend watercolors or acrylic paints? I always recommend watercolors. I never recommend acrylics. Now, if Cinnamon was here, <laughs> she might say the opposite. Yeah, no. I do think acrylics are probably a very, uh, more of an easier medium for beginners just because you can paint over a mistake. I don't think that watercolors are more difficult than acrylics. I just think that the kind of undo factor with, an acry with acrylics is a little bit higher. Um, you know, and it all depends on how you like to paint. If you want to keep going back and returning to a painting, um, then you probably would prefer acrylics. If you want to kind of paint in one fell swoop, watercolors, you know, you have to look at your personality. Some personalities go better with acrylics. Some people prefer watercolors. It's n neither better nor worse. It's just, you know, different. Sometimes I'm in the mood to use acrylics because I generally use acrylics for like home decor things um, or backgrounds for like oil paintings or pastels or something where I just need to get something down that's going to dry quick. Acrylics to me, and it's not to everybody, and I don't, I'm not downplaying the medium at all, but acrylics for me personally are a means to the end. I don't usually set out and say I'm going to paint an acrylic painting because I don't enjoy painting with acrylics that much. I enjoy painting with oils or watercolors. So I don't really, I don't, you know, I don't use acrylics the way like cinnamon does or, or a lot of other artists do because they're not my favorite. I don't enjoy painting with them that much. Once in a while, I will, but... But, you know, I, I don't think one's easier or harder. I think it just depends on what your personality is. Yeah, everyone has preferences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sketching in my flower, just the base of the flowers. No details yet. Just kind of getting everything, everything in. I did bring all my blenders up, but still, I just like to use my fingers to blend for the most part. But you could use Q-tips or... Um, anything else like a purchase blender like I've got these are really nice they're from uh, Pam Pastel and they're wonderful blenders I just uh, I tend to use them more with the pastels because you're they're from pots you know they're like eyeshadows I tend to just use my fingers otherwise all right we're gonna just sketch in the flower heads here I'm gonna go with a with a hard pastel for that so I don't end up getting more more pastel in there than I want don't want to clog the paper. And a little tulip there. We're going to have one hanging down here. Just kind of ball, roughly ball shapes. Don't get too, uh, too carried away. Maybe make them a little smaller than you think you're going to want them just because often when we're working with pastels, things get a little larger than we anticipate. Uh, Simply Tina, would you do a video about how to get started in art? Like basic materials like pencils and inking pens to paper to watercolor paint brushes. I am 16 so my income is limited but I am really interested. That's a great idea. I would love to do something like that. I have to think on it because it's kind of hard to put your mind back into, okay, what would be the, what would be the you can only bring five things yeah right right that could be that could be a good video series i think so summer. yeah or maybe like intro to oils intro to you know how to get started in oils how to get started in you know this acrylics or all right so now i'm going in with a darker green this is just uh, kind of like a um, emeraldy dark foresty green and i'm putting in some shadows I'm keeping my colors fairly vivid at this point because it's easier to muddy up or dull down a color than it is to liven it back up again. The uh, photographer that did this picture has a really massive library on Paint My Photo and his photographs are just stunning. And I haven't attempted to paint one of his before, I don't think, because I don't think I've done any of his because his photos are so pretty that it's like I don't think I can do it justice but I had to with this one it's like you know I really have wanted to try one I didn't have anything else planned for today and I decided this is what this is what it's gonna be I also feel like I want to do some blue do some really dark shadows in here uh, Kelly Tanner what brand of pastels do you recommend for beginners um I would recommend there's a there's a brand called Charvin. It's like ten bucks for forty eight, and they're decent hard pastels. And then I would get Faber Castell has a um, like a 
I don't know if it's a student grade, but it's not their polychromos pastels. It's a it's it's a cheaper version and they're softer and you can get 72 half sticks for under $30 and it gives you a really great variety. And then that with the harder Charvins, I mean, as far as getting started on a budget, that's what I would recommend. I love pan pastels too, but they're not, you know, they're definitely not on a budget, getting started on a budget. They're more expensive. And I think they're worth it, but if you're just starting out, it might be, I, I think you'd probably get more use out of having some stick pastels off, like right off the bat. I'm gonna go in with this hard pastel and put some shadows in my tulips, cause I did see they've got some pretty dark shadows in there. I don't want to get too much in there cause I don't want to muddy it, but I do want that to kind of ground it so my, um, the orange will look really vivid. The Lime Lamb. Do you prefer pan or tube watercolor and why? Um, I usually buy it in the tube and then I let it dry in my palette so I'm working with it like a pan. So I like to work with it dry, but I usually buy it via tube. I like buying pans, they're just not as readily available in my country. I want simple. I won't, don't want to think too much. I want high, quali high quality stuff that's going to suit my needs, um, but I don't want to have to... Uh, the less I have to fuss about it, the quicker I can be painting, the happier I am, so. Uh, Ian Jackson, Lindsay, does it matter which pastels you use at this stage, hard or soft ones? You can start migrating to the medium to softer ones now, um, now that we're putting some detail on the flower. This is like a medium. You want to start off with your hard pastels and then work your way um, to medium and soft at the very end because once you start adding layers of soft pastel, you're not gonna be able to layer much on top. So you want, it's like the fat over lean rule in oil painting. You start with your leaner layers and you work fatter as you go. That's more to keep the, the paint level stable, this paint uh, layer stable so that you don't have, you know, fattier layers still migrating and moving while thinner layers are drying on top. But, as, but it still works the same way with pastels because you, want to make sure that you can keep layering. And if you have the soft layers down on the bottom, you can't stick hard layers on top of that. So it just makes it so that you can add more pastel. Uh, Vishal Namani, have you tried animation of any sort? No, I haven't. No, I'm not a big fan of using the computer any more than I have to. So, um, so no, I've never, never dealt with that. I would just I would just start googling around, start searching, see what you can find. I don't have any particular ones that comes to mind. Maybe even the library, checking out some library books, because I mean, all that stuff is stuff that's been published in books is generally vetted and and uh, should be pretty high quality. <laughs> Do some highlights on my glass over here. Again, thank you so much, guys, for sticking around with the technical difficulties of the day. I do apologize. Our, our, our usual regulars understand. Uh, uh, Valerie Connell. Lindsay, will we get a pan pastels video soon? Yes, I just, uh, I've, I am <laughs> quite behind right now. I have got to, I've got to be honest. I am, uh, this summer, <laughs> I am, I'm very behind at the moment. So, um, when I get a moment, I will, uh, I will love to do one. And with the softer pastels, you can really get that sparkle on the, on the glass, which, you know, really makes it have that glassy look. I also want to widen up the lip of this bottle. I completely didn't even draw the lip of that bottle in there. So I'm going to just try to suggest something with a little hint here and there. Amy's Pateri, what do you like best in colored pencils? Don't know if she means brand or just using them. Um, I don't know. Well, for brands, I, I still like Prismacolors, even though they have some quality control issues as of late. All my older Prismacolor pencils are my favorites. Um, Polychromos are nice too. I prefer the opacity of Prismacolors. Um, there's a lot of decent brands out there. I think probably because I've been using Prismacolor since I was a child, I am I'm a little partial to them. Um, Lyra Polycolor and Polychromos are very similar, and they're you know good quality and everything. 
as far as painting things with colored pencils, I like to paint things that I want the opacity because, like I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of acrylics. So, but if there's something that, I, that would have that opacity that I want to to paint with acrylics, I mean, I probably do like colored pencil or pastel or something. So, I just kind of look at look at that sort of quality. Uh, Baba MC4, what is the difference between charcoal and pastels? Never found a good answer. Charcoal is charred, um, it's charred wood, charred willow usually. So it's like, it's black, typically black or different hardnesses of black. I have seen white charcoal too, which might be like the ashy, um, compressed ash or something. Um, cause I've seen that recurred to as charcoal or as pastel is clay or it could be chalk based, but typically with artist pastels it's clay um so it's just a different it's a different chemical just a different compound and charcoal tends to be black it's like a burnt twig you'll see it be like it'll be branchy shaped and um and black all right i need to put some shadows underneath my um, objects and I'm just kind of thinking on that while I think on that I'm just gonna sh shade this a little bit more I'm just trying to decide what I want to do because my background was painted with black and white gouache over a watercolor so I'm just kind of wondering what color shadows I'm gonna put in there I could mix some shadows I could use the black pastel but since I haven't used the black pastel anywhere else I'm a little leery to do that so what I think I'm gonna do this is the darkest color I've used so far this uh, is a uh, Van Dyke Brown. I think I'm going to start with this and I can add some yellow, I'm um, sorry, blue to it if I need to. So I'm just going to go in and start adding some shadows with this. And like I mentioned on my blog post, I uh, did not have time to plan today's project, so we're just kind of winging it. It's one of those weeks, oh my gosh. But I did take Monday off, took the kids to uh, Santa's Village with my sister. And, uh, was it a rousing success? It was. It was It was a hot day, too. Because yep. usually up in the White Mountains, it's cold. But it was, like, in the 90s. It was perfect. It was so nice. I even packed my bathing suit. I wasn't going to. But then I'm like, you know what? You should. Just have it. Yeah, I did. And I went on the water slides. And it was lovely. You're braver than I am. Ugh. I wish the... Uh, the there was, and, But it was perfect. It was the first Monday they were open. So it wasn't, wasn't packed yet. Um, but still, the, the water slides, there's quite a line for the water slides. Not as bad as it would be in the middle of the summer, but um, I like I like water slides. I just I have a thing against public pools and things like that. I just don't do them. Oh, yeah, they I don't. They freak me right out. Uh, Gracie Shack one. I have a thing about me being in a bathing suit in a public area. It's more, more about um, the public service, I don't really not think, to be. <laughs> I don't really think you need to worry about anything, Lindsay. <laughs> um... Uh, what is uh, Gracie Shack one Lindsay? What is the main thing to remember when doing an art exam? I need some good advice. I have no idea. I didn't go to art school. <laughs> I would say maybe just try to be relaxed and um, see. I don't know. I've never had my art really judged by a teacher other than you know high school, and I really didn't care what the teacher thought of it at that point. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know. I didn't go to art school, so I really can't. Okay, I don't know what art teachers are looking for. They're probably looking to see that you can show what they've been teaching in class, I guess. That's probably what they want. They want to see a reflection of their teaching in, in your work, I would think. I'm going to wipe my dirty finger on this bottle over here because it is glass and it will reflect. So I just want to kind of cross-pollinate wherever I can. Um, and I feel like my shadow there needs a little bit... Um, Cool it, cooler color so I'm gonna go in and just add some of this blue and just mix it in with my finger I don't want really really bright um, strokes in my shadow so that's why I'm blending it when I get back to adding highlights on things I'm not gonna blend them because I'm gonna want those pure color strokes to, to show What else do we have in the house today? Any other regulars? Uh, well, Rich was here. Oh. I think he's still, I don't know, because this I'm kind of getting caught up. But yeah. Rich is here. Ian's here. Gracie's here. Beverly Mossman's here. Let's see. Valerie Connell is here. Older and Dirt. Oh, wonderful. So many lovely faces. Yes, friendly faces. Yes, usual. 
All right, I need to do some stuff up here because it's getting, this is a little uh, undefined. So I'm going again, soft pastel, my schminka here. And look how, see how rich and velvety that is. It just stands on top of all the other layers we've put down because it is a, um, a softer pastel. So I can really get in there and shade. And I'm going to redo the stems there so they so they uh, really stand out. So I'm not going to worry too much about going around them. I'm sorry, Sarah, what were you saying? No, I there are uh, Libby and Buttons. What is your favorite type of pastel? Um, I like the softer ones, but it is necessary to have the harder pastels for your underpainting. Bashminka and Pan Pastels are my favorite. But you know, and I didn't, but I didn't run out and buy those right off the bat. I worked, you know, there's so many student grades that are that are decent, and you know, kind of get used to what you're doing before before going and um, and investing in a really expensive set. I think. I mean, I know that's contrary to what a lot of artists say, but I think if you're going to be so afraid to use something because it's so expensive, then you're better off getting a more affordable option, learning what you're doing, especially if you're not that um cautious of studio safety with pastels i would definitely start with a um with a student grade and work your way up uh let's see us uh, libyan buttons again what do you use more pastels or watercolor watercolor you are the watercolor queen <laughs> i don't know about that but thank you <laughs> uh lie by have you tried brusho powdered pigment Yes, I have. Um, I've tried the Brusho in the Nuance and the Ken Oliver Color Burst. They all have their own... Brusho and Color Burst are very similar. I like the applicator in Color Burst better, but they do seem to be very comparable to one another. Nuance is a lighter palette. The, pal like the colors of them are a little bit more subtle. So it all just depends on what you're after. I have not tried um, Magicals or... Um, there's another one by like... Oh shoot, I can't remember the name now. Um, but there's a, there's there's tons of them are coming out now. It's such a popular medium. Um, but those are the ones I've tried anyway. I haven't tried Bister either. I think those are a combination of walnut ink and uh, and pastel. Uh, Joyce Kimball, Lindsay, where would be a good place to go to learn the right way to color with Prismacolor so that I can get the smooth effect that I see so many people have in their coloring? So we got a 30 second delay, so hopefully okay. we will, yep, we're back. We're still showing the, that 53 minutes, so. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, if you, could you type them and tell them we'll be back as a 30 second delay, but we are, we are rolling. The ads are playing, so okay. people oh. know that we're coming back. Oh okay, my goodness, so Yay! sorry, so sorry. Thank you guys. <laughs> it might rack focus a little bit. I, I had to shut the, shut the encoder off and go into my webcam software and go into auto uh, auto mode, so I do apologize if we get some... People are saying maybe it's a solar flare. Oh, maybe. I We have never had this much... I say it's just because it's so nice out that the technology doesn't want to work. They've quit for the afternoon and have gone to the beach. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Don't blame them. <laughs> yeah, they're fired. It's the filthy children running in the backyard like animals. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because Lila's standing right here. <laughs> I'm just going to put some highlights on here, wrap our painting up as neatly as possible in case we have another issue. But if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, ask them to Sarah. I have no idea if we're way behind or... Oh, I'm well, all caught up. Oh, good, good, I good. was pretty much caught up, so we're, we're caught up. Uh, Ian Jackson, Lindsay, I went to the Brusho factory, got some Brusho and Coa Noir. Uh, oh, I, nice. Uh, Pencils. Progresso aquarelle watercolor pencils the pencils are great maybe a tutorial for you oh nice is ian going to do a tutorial on his channel uh sounds like it oh guys something you might not realize you're, you're meeting friends and you're making relationships in the chat i think that's wonderful now if you click somebody's name or you hover over their name you can subscribe to their channel not everybody with a youtube account will have videos on their channel but if they do why not subscribe you know, spread the love and, uh, you know, you get to kind of put a face to the name or your, I always think it's cool when I click over somebody's channel and then I get to hear what they sound like, 
you know, somebody that's been subscribed or that's commented, it's it's really cool to kind of put a voice in, or a face to the name. So all you gotta do is click somebody's name or hover over it and you can and you can see their channel. Um, people are asking before the technical difficulties, we're talking about the Prismacolor pencil tutorials. Yes. And the website and the name of the person. People didn't catch oh, that. Lacquery Fine Art. Lisa Lacquery is uh, Lisa Cloth is the uh, is the artist. But if you search Lacquery L A C H R I, I think on YouTube. I just got through some great tutorials. Very talented artist. I'm gonna um, put some just very sharp blue lines in here with this harder pastel so I can get some really good detail. I just want a little punch of blue because it's going to make my orange look brighter. Uh, Maxine Perry, Lindsay, do you frame pastels under glass and do you have to worry about pastel light fastness? Um, your artist grade pastels are going to be light fast. They're pretty much just pigment and clay. So it's, I mean, there's very little binders, very little um, other things to worry about. I would do them under glass just because they're a work on paper, so they're going to be a little bit more fragile. Um, quality, I haven't really had any of my student quality stuff fade, honestly, but it, certainly any artist grade pastel is going to be light fast. Um, there might be some colors that are a little more fugitive, such as some of the magentas or more, if you have like a neon, neons are very fugitive no matter what. So if you have like a neon pastel, they're going to be fugitive. They're more for like fun, novelty type things. Um, but yeah, frame them under glass with a mat. Best case scenario is to have a little spacer under the mat so that loose dust can fall back there and not, you know, dirty up the mat. But, um, but yeah, frame it like a watercolor and a lot of, anytime you're doing work on paper, it should be behind glass matted. Um, Meryl Casey, sorry, did not hear. Could you use gelatos as well? And how do they compare to what you are using now? Gelatos are more are sim more similar to a, like an oil pastel. They are um, they're kind of oily, greasy, and they are going to um, they're not quite as opaque. So um, you know that's something to kind of consider while you're using them. You're not going to be able to layer as much stuff also because of the kind of the oil content in them. Um, you could use them with watercolor crayons, kind of as a final layer, as kind of like the uh, the last layers of highlights or whatnot. I think I will maybe use a little blending tool to get in there with a little bit of detail. Eh, I like my finger better for this. I feel like it wants to pick up uh, my pastel. Now you can use the harder pastels over the softer pastels if you're trying to get detail in there because it that's that's a really great another great way to use them and not much is going to stick which is a great way to just add subtle details at the end of a picture or you can do that with the pastel pencils as well because they are a very hard pastel so there where I, I just can't really get the crisp line that I want to I can find a nice hard pastel in the color I'm going for Plus, they usually have nice edges, so it's easier to get to get in there. So I guess there was a huge, a big to-do in um, in the UK yesterday. They voted to secede. People were chatting about that, and they're like, "No, no politics, no." Uh, I know it's kind of crazy that the that Britain wants to leave the U the EU. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what that's all about. I mean, Cause they they're, are, they're sick of propping up the rest of the EU, probably with the exception of Germany. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't blame them. I don't know. I'm not. I don't. Uh, let's see. Back to questions before yeah. we get sucked in. I'm gonna Seriously, get sucked yeah. in and say something else. Um, yeah. Well, see, and I don't know, so I would just make uninformed, uh, uninformed speculation. So we don't need that either. <laughs> Uh, Wendy Pickett, any tips for printing images on watercolor paper and then painting over them? Um, you're better off to print on copy paper and use graphite paper to transfer it because your inkjet prints are going to um, are going to smear. And I honestly have a really hard time getting my my printer to take heavyweight watercolor paper. It it jams it. So, yeah, most most home printers aren't made to print on heavier stuff. You have to go like more of a commercial 
like a Staples or a print, you know, if you yeah. have a printing, printing place in town, they could handle it, but right. it's still... But then, then you've got, you might as well just get some graphite paper and just transfer on the, the lines that you need. That way you don't have a bunch of excessive lines that you don't need. That, that would be my advice. Uh, Ian Jackson, would you use a smug stick for blending? What is a smug stick? I don't know. Maybe they mean a smudge stick? Maybe he does. I like my Came fingers. You could, you could use whatever. You could use, um, yeah, I'm sure you could. You could use eyeshadow brushes. And then, like, when I get to the final layers like I am here, I really don't want to blend much. I want to kind of just leave it. I want that texture, especially an orange peel. I want that texture. I want to have, um, I want to have uh, the detail, and I want those pure colors to show. Uh, Zane Skadina, is it possible for you to have face cam in your live streams? Um, I don't really know how to set up a multi-camera system. I think I can only have one. I'd have to have some sort of switcher because I think you can only do one webcam. When I did an interview with Barb Owens last week, I actually had it had my um, my camera on like a tripod and I just tipped it down to my work area, but it wouldn't be squared up like this. It would be kind of at an angle, so I just figured for a tutorial it's probably a little bit better to have a better view of the um like a more square on view of my painting but i mean i could do something like that and i did that on one of the the evening live streams i did when it was just me i i moved the camera the one camera that i had so and besides there's you know you want to focus on the painting i want you to distract besides, by all of our beauty here well the, and you know. plus i make faces and <laughs> I don't need people to see the faces I make sometimes. I'm a very I'm not a I'm a terrible liar. My face gives it all away. <laughs> <laughs> what are you lying about? Anyway, that looks great, Lindsay. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> How no. is she gonna save that one? I wonder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Starshine Soldier, do you have any videos on how to mat your art? Yep. Yep, I don't know if I, I think I might even have a framing playlist. If not, just go on to my, um, go on to my YouTube, go onto the main channel and there's a search bar and just search framing. Beverly is encouraging me to open my mouth. No, Beverly, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very opinionated. Not everybody appreciates that. This is a friendly forum. I don't want to, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get in trouble. And I don't want Lindsay to get in trouble. <laughs> And we already know I'm making uninformed statements because I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're telling them that they're uninformed, so yeah. that's okay. <laughs> and you can see how when you're working with pastels, you end up with a lot more colors out and using than you would if you were working with watercolor, just because with a dry medium like that, you're necessarily blending everything and you are. Um, you're kind of more layering colors. Are we frozen again? Uh, Susan Carson says she's lost the stream. I don't know if it's just her or if it's us. Nobody else is saying it. Oh, I'm just going to have a peek over on the control room here. Same good. Um, good. Okay. Same good on our end for once. So. All right. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I'm not touching any buttons if it says good. <laughs> <laughs> there. There. I think I'm pretty happy with this. Maybe a little more dark into the flowers, but... Uh, what do you think, Sarah? Are we looking. I, I love it. I love the background on that one. That was fun, and it made it really toothy, so it really held the pastel mm -hmm. well. Of course, I'm orange. Is I love orange, so I, I like the colors of the tulips. Oh yeah, orange and green were your wedding colors. That's true. I had four colors: black and gray, orange and green. Because you know, I can't go with pink or purple. Or... <laughs> it was very elegant, though. It was a very pretty, pretty color Thanks. scheme. It was tricky to make it not look like Halloween either, because I could very have easily gone into Halloween mode, which would have been fine if it was in October. We got married in August. Oh, it was very elegant. It was very chic, very unusual. Well, I'm chic and unusual. You are. My stained giraffe t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, just one little stain. That's <laughs> nothing. Well, there. I think I'm going to call this done. We're calling it a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I still have a full cup of coffee here. I mean, look at that. I haven't even had a sip. Oh, I've been too preoccupied with my technical difficulties. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't know.
don't know, I think coffee would help the internet. Maybe if I spilled coffee on the computer, something would magically happen. Um, I don't know. Aisha Alam, she keeps asking you to do challenges, and uh, Lindsay does not do art challenges. No. So please no. stop asking. She doesn't do them. She won't be doing them, and you asking them every five minutes is not going to make her do them anymore. Yeah. I mean, I can understand. I think she's probably, I bet she's probably one of my younger viewers, and that's a very Maybe. big theme, like with the younger channels. Younger, not younger channels, but kids. Right, kids. I don't want to doubt it. They, 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 yeah, they, they, it's more like my daughters want to do art challenges. If you watch the Crafty Twins YouTube channel, there's art challenges. There'll be art challenges there. As yeah, as far as you could see. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I want to thank Jerry's Artorama for sponsoring today. You can find supplies I used over on their website. They have wonderful prices and um, just a little secret. If you Google for a coupon code <gasps> before you order. Coupon could, code? Yes. Oh, my goodness. I love coupon yeah, codes. Yeah, you'd save a little bit more money. So I'm just going to give you that little secret there in case you don't know about coupon codes because uh, the prices are low. But, hey, coupon to on top of it. <laughs> low and a coupon up there. You can't beat it. And um, if you if you like this sort of technique where we used watercolor for a background and we went over it with uh, pastels, please check out my Craftsy class. You can get it for 50% off if you click the link in the video description. If you go to Craftsy.com and buy it, you got to pay 30 bucks. But if you go through my link, you get get it for 15 So um, I do appreciate that. And um, as always, I appreciate your support coming in, sharing, 